Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. This is the follow-up to the video I just posted a few minutes ago. For those of you that may not know, um, I announced a YouTube video uh, event, which is going to be kind of cool. And when I announced it, I gave the wrong date. Duh, I was off by a week. So a lot of you reacted to it the moment I posted it because I gave you the wrong date. And what I'm going to do is I decided to answer your questions as quickly as I could, even though I gave you the wrong date. But for everybody else out there, on December the 2nd, 2012, at 1 p.m. Central Time, we are going to wipe the board clean of all questions, and we're going to begin answering questions at 1 o'clock. And uh, I'll answer them in the order that you submit them, and I'll answer as many as I can. And hopefully this will give a lot of you that have tried time and time and time again to ask a question. Yours never gets answered. Hopefully you will have seen this video in time to be able to submit your questions. So let's dive into it. All right, this question came to me at 1.11 on last Sunday. Again, I gave everybody the wrong date. This is from Thomas from Fairland, Indiana. Thomas said, did Dilophosaurus have frills like a frilled lizard? Ah, I, I mentioned Dilophosaurus in a pre previous uh, video, Thomas, and you'll probably have seen this. But no, it didn't. There's no evidence to support that. Sometimes in the movies, they feel a need to kind of um, uh, embellish the facts. In other words, kind of take something really cool and try to make it cooler, which aggravates me when it comes to dinosaurs, because what could be cooler? I've often said this. If there's such things as flying saucers and one of them is ever discovered in this country, if a TV network finds out, the first thing they would want to do is add more flashing lights to it and paint fire down the side so that it would look cooler for television. It drives me nuts. All right, uh, so it didn't, Thomas. It really didn't. Um, there's no evidence to support that it did. Um, but Dilophosaurus is still, it's a pretty big dinosaur. So that frill, it would be sort of cool if it did, but there's just no evidence to support it. All right, at 120 yesterday, uh, let me make sure I can pronounce this. Kiriyama, I think it's Kiriyama, from Manchester, uh, the greater Manchester area in United Kingdom. Hey, George, thanks for accepting me on Friends Book. It is great to have you as a friend on there. My question is probably the most asked, but with a twist. In Planet Dinosaur, the latest BBC documentary, Spinosaurus can be seen fighting a Carcharodontosaurus. It wins by, repeated, by repeatedly slashing his opponent with those meat hook-like claws and gripping, tearing at its opponent. Eventually, the Carcharodontosaurus just backs off through sheer intimidation and his size. Would the same thing work against Tyrannosaurus rex? Well, that's a very interesting question, Kiriyama. That's a very good question. You know, oftentimes when, when I size up animals, and obviously I do it, it's simply my, my opinion. It's, it can't be based on a lot of fossil evidence, because in a lot of cases, these dinosaurs didn't live together. So... My opinion is based on things like their size and the way I think their body was put together and how uh, strong they were, those sort of things. But I oftentimes do miss pointing out about those enormous claws and the longer arm reach of Spinosaurus. And I got to tell you this, if you're fighting somebody smaller than you, but that smaller opponent can inflict a tremendous amount of pretty nasty wounds, at some point in time, you're going to decide it's not worth it. Let me put it to you like this. If you take an African lion and you take a porcupine, the lion is gigantically larger. But it doesn't take long for the lion to come to the conclusion that fighting that thing may not make all the sense in the world. And at that point, size doesn't matter. Well, if you apply that to uh, Spinosaurus with those nasty claws, yeah, if he could inflict enough injuries and stay out of the jaws of that Tyrannosaurus Rex. In my opinion, absolutely he could win in a fight, and that's a kind of a neat neat way to look at it. It certainly makes me look at it from a different perspective, so good to hear from you. All right, at 121, this is from Pitar from Zagreb, Croatia. Hello, my dearest friend. It is so good to hear from you, my friend. My first question is, could Tyrannosaurus Rex swim? Wow, don't think anybody's ever asked this one of me. This is a great question. You guys from Croatia, Croatia are so smart. Apparently here in the U.S. we're not very smart because I can't pronounce the word Croatia. Go figure. Uh, could it swim? I believe probably all dinosaurs could swim to some degree because really almost every animal on Earth can swim. It's hard to imagine, but horses, sheep, cows, those animals can swim and we never think of them as swimming. I do believe Tyrannosaurus rex could probably swim, but he probably did a version of the doggy paddle with his back legs. He probably struggled to keep his head above the water, and if he was swimming, that's probably all you'd see is his head kind of moving across. 
Yeah, he would probably, um, he could, probably couldn't use his tail. Maybe his tail would have acted as a rudder, but he probably didn't swing it back and forth because the musculature doesn't really support that tail being used as a thrusting mechanism. So I believe that he could, but he probably did the doggy paddle, but it would be a very big doggy. Second question is, is T-Rex size in Jurassic Park oversized or is it is it real compared with the skeleton and with studies? Thank you, Pitar. Pitar, so nice to hear from you. And that's another very good question. The T-Rex in Jurassic Park, to me, if I remember correctly, he's pretty accurate in size. The only thing they kind of inflated was the size of the Utah Raptor. Well, they called it Velociraptor, but they kind of inflated, well, they did inflate the Velociraptor dramatically. But I think Tyrannosaurus Rex was probably pretty close. I think if memory serves me, and I'm getting old, so my memory isn't as good. Moving on, at 132, this is from Bernardo from Lisbon, Portugal. Hello, George. I hope that you're having a nice day. I am having a great day, uh, Bernardo, and I hope that you are as well. Um, so my question is, is there, are, are there any mammals of these days that could defend himself against any huge predator like T-Rex or Spinosaurus? Whoa, another great question, man. These, you guys are great. Um, well, I guess an elephant would be able to defend himself to some degree, uh, but he's not really designed against something like Tyrannosaurus rex. Uh, rhinoceroses probably would have the greatest chance against Tyrannosaurus rex or Spinosaurus, mostly because of their ability to maneuver much quicker. They could turn faster, they could spin faster, and I don't believe Spinosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex would have the ability to grab something that could move as fast as that. So I'm only thinking a big, big... Um, uh, big mammals of today. Man, I like that question. That's very good. So again, my guess would be elephant might be able to hold his own against those two. Ooh, I don't know. Boy, wouldn't that be a titan of a fight? But that's a great question, buddy. It's good to hear from you. All right. Uh, this is Fidel from far. I happened to answer Fidel the other day. Hi, it's me again. I'm going to ask you two questions. First, if you said Spinosaurus is less robust than other animals, why was Spinosaurus in an environment where there were a few robust animals. So do you think that we should give Spinosaurus more credit and who would, in a, who would win in a fight between two Utah Raptors and two Terror Birds? Wow. Okay, when I talk about Spinosaurus not being as robust, what I mean by that, Fidel, is that um, he's a little more slender. He's still gigantic in size. And I only use the word not robust in comparison to Tyrannosaurus Rex. So, because usually the question is who would win in a fight between T-Rex and Spinosaurus? And I always mention Spinosaurus as not being as robust. He is gigantic. He's a massive dinosaur. Um, so I only say that in comparison to Tyrannosaurus Rex. I hope that makes sense. As for your fight against two Utah Raptors and two Terror Birds, more than likely these animals would never meet, but if they did, more than likely, the birds probably were solitary hunters and therefore probably had no experience in tag teaming something, in my opinion. Whereas Utah raptors probably come from a line of animals that are pack hunters and therefore they're better equipped to hunt with a partner, meaning the partner knows what to do when one uh, Utah raptor does this, the partner knows to do that. With terror birds, they probably wouldn't be able to function that way, in my opinion. And so, therefore, I think Utah raptors would slaughter them. All right, I'm going to take one more. This one came in at 156. Uh, this came in from Karsten from, holy smokes, Purmerend, Purmerend, North Holland in the Netherlands. I hope, oh, Karsten, I cannot believe it. You sent this, but you didn't, add a, you didn't ask a question. So all I got was a blank thing. That is such a bummer. Well, Carson, hopefully you'll be able to write back to me um, at a later, uh, when I do this thing again, and hopefully I'll be able to get to it. All right, everybody, that's it for now. So again, everybody, uh, on December the 2nd, at uh, December the 2nd, 2012, that's this year, at 1 p.m. Central Time, that's Central U.S. Time, uh, I'm going to wipe the board clean a minute before then, and at 1 o'clock, I'm going to begin to answer your questions, and I'm going to try to record them and post them as quickly as I can to try to make it as as um, 
uh, as, as immediate as possible. So if you've got a question, save it for then, because if you write to me between now and then, chances are I'm probably not going to have the time to do one of these again. So uh, save your questions and write to me then. If you've got a question, go to my website, dinosaurgeorge.com, and click on the Ask Dinosaur George page. And when you fill out the form, don't just give me your name and uh, where you live. Make sure to ask your question, Karsten. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, also follow me on Facebook. Join uh, one of my friends on Facebook. And when you do look for me on Facebook, look for George Blassing, B-L-A-S-I-N-G, because that's how you'll find me on Facebook. I do have a fans page, but I don't use it because I just don't have to deal with it. So I don't have time to deal with it. Um, so everybody out there, practice your reading, young people. Practice your good manners, everybody. I will see you guys soon. Thank you so much.